Okay, welcome back folks. It's time to return to the topic of cloning Mark 262. And what that means is this stuff, the Black Hills 556 77 grain OTM that's used by the military and designated as Mark 262. It uses a 77 grain Sierra Match King and at least in my 18 inch white oak armament barrel, the velocities are around 2760 feet per second. That's pretty smoking fast for a 77 grain bullet. So this is like our 12th video in this series of trying to duplicate that performance and trying a whole bunch of different powders. I'd have to say we've done a pretty good job. Our last video about a month ago was verifying the best loads we had worked up so far. And we've found quite a few powders that get the job done, but we've still got more powders to test. And that's the plan for today, trying out two more powders. And I wanna try out the Winchesters. Winchester 748, I'm afraid this guy might not quite get us there as far as velocity, but I wanna try it anyway. Winchester 748, and the other is Winchester 760. This guy, on the other hand, is really quite slow for 223, and I'm not sure if we're gonna have the case capacity to get enough powder in there to reach the velocities that we need to. But then again, maybe so, but there's only one way to find out, and that's to test them. Now, Winchester 760 is the same powder as Hodgton H414. It's just like the situation with Winchester 296 and Hodgton H110, same sort of deal here. They're the same powders. I got a new box of bullets. Like I mentioned, we're using the 77 grain Sierra Match King with a cantalure, and that's one reason why we've had a little bit of a break from this series is I ran out of bullets, I needed to get a new box. So I got a new box and we're ready to go. For brass, we're using Lake City Brass. And the batch of brass I'm using today is a new brass. This is some once fired Lake City Brass that I came across. It's been sized, it's been trimmed, case mouth has been deburred and chamfered, this stuff's ready to go. For a primer, we are using the CCI number 41 primers. Been doing a pretty good job for us so far in this series. So let's talk about load data. Like a lot of the other videos in this series, we're just really kind of making it up on our own. To reach the velocity levels we're after, we are exceeding published maximum charges almost across the board with every powder. So be careful, don't blow your face off. Winchester 748, way back in like video number one, quick load told us it should be about 23.6 grains. Unfortunately, Hodgton on their website does not have 748 data for a 77 grain bullet. They do have data for 69 grain and 63 grain bullets. The Burger manual has some info. The Hornady manual has info for their 75 grain. And the Nosler manual has data for their 77 grain. So I kind of took all of those data sources into consideration. And what I want to shoot today is up to 25.0 grains. We'll shoot three tenths of a grain increments, which means we'll start at 23.8. So 23.8 up to 25.0. Winchester 760 is a different story. There's really no data. This is a slower powder than anybody in their right mind uses for this sort of application. So we're kind of on our own. The Hodgton website does have data for 82 grain bullets, 82s and 90s. And the max charges with those were 24 and 25 grains respectively. Quick load had told us 26.1. I want to try shooting up to 26.0 grains. So exactly one grain higher than Winchester 748, which means we're starting out at 24.8. I'll know for sure once we get to bullet seating, but pretty sure that both of these powders were going to be we're going to be compressed, but I'm not sure yet just how much we're going to be compressed. So we'll get to that here in just a minute. But at this point, I've already primed this brass because, well, like I mentioned, this is once fired Lake City brass and the batch of once fired brass I've been working out of is a little bit janky. I'm finding a whole lot of loose primer pockets. So that's what I, a little bit ago, I had to sit down and kind of go through a larger batch and go ahead and prime them and keep the ones that felt good and throw out the ones that were loose. So I've got 50 pieces here that had pretty good primer pockets. So that's what we're gonna use. I've been thinking about just buying some new Lake City brass. Once fired Lake City can be great stuff, but. Man, I ordered a big batch from, I don't even remember what website, you know, there's a million websites out there selling military contract, once fired Lake City brass, and you really never know what you're gonna get. And I kind of got unlucky in my last batch with these loose primer pockets. So whatever, I need to weigh out some charges, which is super boring. So I'll see you guys here in a minute when we're ready to start some bullet seating. All right, so I moved on to bullet seating and was just uh, seating some examples from both powders, minimum and maximum charges. The maximum charges with both powders are definitely uh, compressed, but they don't seem all that compressed. The starting charge with each powder, there's just a touch 
of movement you can feel when you shake the case. So we're right at that 100% case fill with both powders. So that's good. Now our bullet seating die, it's still set from a month ago. I was actually loading up a few cider rounds a little bit ago, double check the overall length, it's fine. We are shooting that same 2.246 inch overall length that we had shot in the past, which is a little bit of a weird number, but that's what we had found back in our first video when we were inspecting the, uh, the box of Black Hills factory ammo. That was the overall length they used, so that's what we've been using. I am doing a light crimp with uh, Lee factory crimp die. Nothing heavy, just a little bit, just a little, uh, just a little crimp into our can lure. Probably can't even see it. But that's what it looks like. And I just need to get these guys seated and we'll be ready to hit the range. Okay, folks, the wind has been blowing like crazy today. I've tried to wait it out, and I think it's going to pay off. It's finally died down a little bit, but we might have a little bit of gusty wind to deal with. You know, it got me thinking, I seriously need like a wind sock back here. That might make a nice addition to my videos, having a nice wind sock in the background to look at. We're going to be shooting at 100 yards. My gun is a Palmetto State Armory upper that I dropped an 18-inch White Oak Armament SPR barrel with a one and eight twist into, and it's a really good shooter. We've got a Magneto Speed Chronograph, a Silencer Co. Omega Suppressor, a six to 24 Vortex Viper PST Scope, a Magpul PRS Stock, a CMC three and a half pound trigger. So we've got a halfway decent shooting platform here. So let's get to it. I am using one inch dots today. Uh, we're gonna be starting out with 23.8 grains of Winchester 748. The gun is a little bit warmed up. I shot about 10 cider rounds. In the last video, we were shooting 200 yards, so I wanted to have a few rounds to get sighted in here for 100. So it's warmed up, ready to go. We've got no excuses. Hopefully we're shooting good groups right from the beginning. All right, so no pressure signs on the brass and that velocity is nice and low down at 2573. So it looks like we started safe, but the velocity was a little bit all over the place. That's a pretty ugly standard deviation number at 35.2. So hopefully that improves. Next up is 24.1. Boy, these crappy velocities continue. So that one had an extreme spread of 75 feet per second. Standard deviation of 30. That's kind of gross. I am starting to lose hope here. But moving right along, no pressure signs on the brass. So 24.4 grains is next. Yeah, so all along it seems like it, it kind of wants to group a little bit right there at three o'clock on the orange, but it keeps just throwing these crazy flyers out to the right. But that last one, would we have four out of five? Yeah, four out of five tried to group, so that's good. Velocity's climbing pretty well. Standard deviations are tightening, so maybe here at the top end, it'll all come together. Next up, 24.7 grains. Yeah, more flyers to the right. That sucks. 
But the good news though is our brass is still looking okay. I don't see any pressure signs. I thought once we get up into these sort of velocity levels with 748, we might hit some pressure. But see, it doesn't seem to be the case so far, so we can move on. 25.0 grains. All right, folks, those are some downright ugly groups. Just gross, gross standard deviation numbers, just kind of gross all around. So I'm gonna give the gun a little bit of time to cool down. I've been taking my time. It's not really all that hot, but I need a break. My eyes need a rest. Okay, break time is over and it's time for some Winchester 760. Let's hope these groups tighten up because so far, been pretty disappointing. 24.8 grains is first. All right, good looking group, good looking standard deviation number. Everything looks better, good. Now our velocity is pretty darn low. It makes me question, wonder we'll, whether we'll uh, make it up to 2750, but that's okay. I'd rather start too low and stay safe than start too high and get ourselves into trouble. We can always do a follow-up video, right? Let me chase down this brass. Okay, the brass looks great, but you wouldn't expect any different at that sort of velocity. Next up is 25.1 grains. Okay, another decent group and another decent standard deviation number. So moving right along, 25.4. Man, what a difference a powder change can make. Excellent group, excellent uh, standard deviation number. Our velocities are still disappointingly low. You know, I meant, to, I meant to get a little bit hotter than this, but we can always do follow-up videos. And I'll tell you what, at this point, it's looking like Winchester 760 would certainly be worthy of a follow-up video if needed, because shooting good, good standard deviation numbers, so moving right along. 25.7 is next. So I just had to open my big fat mouth. So the group went to crap. The standard deviation number went to crap. Everything went to crap, dang it. But pressure still looks just fine, so we're moving right along. Last up, 26.0 grains. All right, a little bit better group, but the standard deviation numbers still look like crap. So let's get back to the bench and talk this out. All right, let's start out with a quick look at the brass and it will be very quick because there's really nothing to see. This is our max charge of Winchester 748. The primers are looking nice and round. No distinct ejector marks. If there's any there, it's probably just left over from uh, the way this brass was before I even loaded it this time. Check out the old primer crimps on this batch of brass. Look how far off centered they are. The whole batch was this way. It's ridiculous. I've seen some that were bad before, but these are just really, really bad. 
it certainly made the crimps easier to remove when I was prepping this batch because they were barely crimped at all from being so far off center. Yeah, nothing else to see. Winchester 760, we had nice low velocities anyway. Yep, just nothing to see here. All right, let's have a little closer look at the groups here. And this is quite the juxtaposition. Winchester 748 was just awful. This is as bad as we've seen in this series as far as accuracy goes. So my barrel, this powder, and this bullet just didn't work. Now the velocity, we got up to 2,718 feet per second, and we didn't have any pressure signs, so we might have been able to hit the target velocity, but the velocities were just all over the place. Those standard deviation numbers were gross, and it was just bad all around. So we're, we're not gonna be shooting any more Winchester 748 in this series. But Winchester 760 definitely shows some promise. That group in the middle, the .351 inch, that's probably in the top 10 groups we've shot in this series. We've shot some pretty good groups, but that's uh, that's a particularly good one. Excellent standard deviation. The only one that kind of went sideways on us was uh, 25.7 grains, got a little squirrely. So the velocity numbers, you know, were not impressive. We didn't quite get up there to where we needed to be, but that's okay. I'm a little bit worried about the standard deviation numbers going, going to crap there on the top end. But regardless, I think this powder deserves some more investigation because the results on the lower end were just excellent. So maybe it's just kind of going through a crappy section there. You know, maybe there's going to be another accuracy node up there on the top end. Because I, I went ahead and threw these velocities onto a chart just to kind of try and guesstimate about where we would need to be to get up to 2,750 feet per second. And it's a little under a little under 27 grains of powder, which that's a ton of powder, but that's about where we were with uh, Power Pro 2000 MR. I think our final load was like 26.7 grains. So it's a bunch of powder, but I think we've got the case capacity to do it. And it's worth, it's worth exploring more, definitely. I'm still surprised by just how bad Winchester 748 was. I haven't shot a ton of Winchester 748, but I've shot a, a decent amount, and I don't remember it being crappy for me in other applications. So it might just be, you know, this one specific combo, my barrel, this bullet, just didn't work. But it was just awful. Tell you what, with Winchester 760, I'm kind of wondering which way it's going to go, because, let's see, Accurate 2520 and Power Pro 2000 MR. Both of those powders have held the accuracy together at the higher velocities, but we've had a couple. Uh, CFE 223 comes to mind, and I think Lever Evolution did the same thing. Like once the velocities really got up there near our target, the groups just went to crap, like really bad. I especially remember it with CFE 223 because it was shooting itty bitty little groups, and then like we hit 2,700 feet per second, and all hell broke loose, and the groups were terrible. So I'm looking forward to. Uh, to more exploration with Winchester 760. I'm gonna hold out hope that maybe it will, uh, maybe it'll hold it together. Maybe there'll be a, you know, another accuracy note on that top end. So I'm not gonna sit on this too long. We'll have another video pretty soon. What I'll probably do is dig out another powder and we'll, we'll continue working with Winchester 760 and then we'll bring in another powder to play with as well and try and get this series rolling again cause it's a fun little series and these bullets just shoot awesome. So I think that's where we'll leave it. If you'd like to help support my channel, come to patreon.com reloading, and I will see you guys next time.